this is a continuation of the IR measurement video. The tests have now been passed, so it says accessor identified, test has been passed, so we can close here. Now we can choose a cell in order to make a measurement. So all of our IR cells are kept in this desiccator. Here's a, a flow cell, so we can attach HPLC fittings to both ends and flow solution through there. And the window material here is made out of KVR. And right now the spacing is 500 micrometers. So the space between the two windows is 500 micrometers. That spacing can be changed. So this one is bearing fluoride, and this one has a spacing of 100 micrometers. So when you are choosing a cell window material, you should look at your solvent that you're planning on using and its solvent, its solvation properties and which material would be better. Also have this cell, which I'm not sure, what, I think it's KBR and I just found it in the lab. It has a crack in it and it probably leaks. Um, these are the containers where these windows are get stored in. So here's the barium fluoride container. Here's the KBR containers. The other containers are for calcium fluoride and zinc selenide, but for the zinc selenide windows are, I believe both are in here and they're in working conditions. And then the calcium fluoride, I think one of them has broken. So can't use that. Today, let's use the KBR one. So of course with KBR, don't use water because you will dissolve it. So now to get a background spectrum, I'm gonna take this and slide it into the holder in here. Cut. Come on, slide in. Hold it upside down, it's better. Both sides are the same, it doesn't matter if it's upside down or right way up. Both sides are upright. Okay, close it up. Now we're gonna do a back one second. So I'm going to go to, we're gonna add a few buttons because there's a little arrow there and pressing on customize, add or remove buttons. Okay, so let's add measurement buttons. Let's add the routine measurement. Oops, there it is. And we'll also add repeated measurement. Great. So now we've added routine measurement, which is this button right here. You click on it, and it now gives you a dialog box where you can change things. So there's basic, there's under basic, there's the operator name, which is not going to change. It'll always be default. Your sample description you can change. So we will call this maybe video test. And you can now go to advanced, where you can change the resolution, the scan time. You can change whether your resultant spectra will be recorded in absorbance or transmittance. So let's choose transmittance for today. Resolution we'll leave at four. Sure, let's make this to maybe eight scans. So the sample scan and the background scan is gonna be eight scans. Basic, you can leave the same. Display, you can set the display limits. Right now it's 400 to 4,000, so we'll leave that. Check signal, I'm not gonna do that. You can see the um, position of the interferogram. So that should be fine. So now let's do a background single channel. So if I press on background here, it's going to take a background and then next time, and so you press background, it takes a background. Okay, so right down here it says there's a green bar that tells you it's doing something and it's at three scans now, so it's going to do eight scans. So it has finished its eight scans, so now we can inject a sample into this cell and then choose the sample single channel. So we can take this out and 
and then you would put it back the same way around as you did last time because you want it to measure the same bit. And so now we're going to hit sample single channel on here. So this is this button right there. And that box goes away and it's going to tell you down here in the green bar how many scans it has done. Okay, so this is what shows up as we took a spectrum of the same thing that we did the background up, the background got subtracted, so it makes sense that it's pretty much a straight line, but we can zoom in. So if I, I right click on anywhere on the spectrum, it gives you these options. So I'm going to select zoom in. Now you can drag, click and drag over the part that you want to zoom into. So as you can see, there wasn't a perfect subtraction. So they're still somewhat of the spectrum, but it's attracted basically everything because these are, if you look at the y-axis here, there's very tiny changes here. This is basically, this is just the, this is basically a straight line. But if you actually had a sample in there, hopefully you would get a signal somewhere. That is how you do a measurement.